Welcome back to GFR. Ridley Scott's Prometheus was a controversial entry in the Alien franchise when it was released in 2012. But the most controversial thing about it is something everyone at the time seemed to miss entirely. Because Prometheus isn't an original story. Prometheus is a stealth remake of the 1989 movie Star Trek V The Final Frontier. You caught me on the way to the shower. Before you dismiss us as crazy, stick around and we'll show you the proof. The designers tested it using the most intelligent and resourceful person they could find. First, there is the broader, superficial similarity between the two movies. Both movies are about a starship crew journeying to a distant part of the galaxy in search of humanity's creator. Both movies tell the story of what happens when that crew finds him, and he's nothing at all like what they expect. So they're similar in a broad sense, but similar ideas can happen, right? Let's take a closer look. The subtext of both Prometheus and Star Trek V involves questioning the value of faith and belief. Both movies have crews led by scientists who have abandoned logic in favor of blind belief. In Prometheus, the crew is led across the galaxy by a scientist who believes, without evidence, they've been invited by their creator to come for a visit. In Star Trek V, the crew of the Enterprise is led across the galaxy to their creator by a Vulcan scientist who has abandoned logic for emotion and now values faith over evidence. Want more? We're just getting started. Big things have small beginnings. Both Prometheus and Star Trek V introduce their characters in some sort of remote, digging location. In Prometheus, we're introduced to faith scientist Elizabeth Shaw hanging out in a remote area of Scotland digging through sand and stone. In Star Trek V, we're introduced to faith-driven cyborg hanging out in a remote area on a crummy planet named Nimbus 3 where he encounters a man digging in the sand. The two movies even have similar settings. In Prometheus, they land their ship on a barren stretch of land a short distance away from a strange structure that almost seems like it might be a temple. They must travel from their ship to the structure to look for God. In Star Trek V, they do pretty much the same thing. The Enterprise lands a shuttle on a barren stretch of land, a short distance away from a strange structure that almost seems like it might be a temple. In Trek, the structure looks like a giant Stonehenge. In Prometheus, the structure is a giant rock dome. Aside from these minor style differences, the setting is the same. Both Prometheus and Star Trek V use plot devices involving crew betrayal. In Prometheus, everyone has their own agenda and no one really follows the orders of the ship's captain or their employer. Then David betrays everyone by poisoning one of the scientists. In Star Trek V, the usually loyal crew of the Enterprise mutinies and betrays its captain in order to follow the blind beliefs of Cyborg. Spock, as the movie's David, refuses to shoot Cyborg and turns the ship over to him. Shoot him! Coxie. Both movies involve a scene in which the crew races back to the ship aboard a vehicle and must make it inside before they're destroyed. In Prometheus, this happens when the team drives back to the ship at a frantic pace in ground vehicles to escape an approaching storm. Incidentally, one of these vehicles looks a lot like a Star Trek shuttle on wheels. They careen straight into the cargo bay, making it inside just before the storm can destroy them. In Star Trek V, this same thing happens when approaching Klingons threaten to blow them up. To escape the approaching Klingons, the crew must race back to the Enterprise aboard a shuttle. They careen straight into the shuttle bay, making it inside just before the Klingons can blow them up. In both movies, part of the crew stays back at the ship while others go deal with God. And in both movies, everyone back at the ship knows what's going on via their view screen. In Prometheus, the crew back at the ship watches everything their exploration team does through a series of complex video cameras and sensors. In Star Trek V, the crew back on the ship watches everything Captain Kirk, Cyabuck, Spock and McCoy do because God takes over their view screen and magically focuses it on whatever those four do. No! 
The big surprise discovery in both movies is that God exists, and he wants us dead. In Prometheus, God is a powerful alien who wakes up and starts killing everyone. He intends to escape the planet and set out into the galaxy to wipe out humanity. In Star Trek V, God is a powerful alien who awakens and starts trying to kill everyone. He intends to escape the planet and set out into the galaxy to begin his reign of terror. Excuse me, I'd just like to ask a question. What does God need with a starship? Ten. Nine. Eight. In the end, to stop the vengeful alien god creature from escaping his planet, someone must sacrifice themselves. In Prometheus, it's Captain Janik and the crew of the Prometheus who have to die. They throw their entire ship at the alien god creature to stop him from escaping. In Star Trek V, Cybuck throws himself at the alien god creature and wrestles with it, keeping it busy by engaging in a suicidal mind meld. Both movies are pretty similar, just separated by stylistic choices and the established universes in which they're set. Both movies are controversial entries in their franchises. Maybe it's time to stop giving William Shatner crap for directing such a bad Star Trek movie. If Ridley Scott can't make Star Trek V work, then no one can. Thanks for watching, and remember, no one knows entertainment better than GFR. I know this ship like the back of my hand.